The attack on the Nord Stream pipelines was one of the biggest stories of 2022, and yet it was quietly swept under the rug by a media that was all too eager to just say, Russia did it and move on. And if you had any questions about what would motivate Russia to destroy an estimated $20 billion worth of its own energy infrastructure, well then you were referred to as a conspiracy theorist or a Russian puppet. But that didn't stop some people from continuing to search for the truth of what actually happened. And that includes a journalist who is arguably one of the greatest of our time, Seymour Hersh, who just released a bombshell report titled How America Took Out the Nord Stream Pipeline. For the first time, we have a clear picture of not just how this attack was carried out, but how long it had been in the making, with plans dating back to December 2021 and involving key members of the Biden administration. Plans that involved a series of meetings with the CIA, in which it was made known that the impending attack on Nord Stream had been ordered directly by Joe Biden, but must be kept as covert as possible. But not so covert that other NATO members weren't made aware of it. According to the report, they waited until June 2022 for U.S. Navy divers to plant remotely triggered explosives on the pipelines using NATO's annual summer exercises in the Baltic Sea as their cover. They then waited again amid concerns that an explosion within 48 hours of NATO drills in the same region would be a little too obvious. Then, on September 26, 2022, the report says that a Norwegian Navy P-8 surveillance plane made a seemingly routine flight and dropped a sonar buoy. Within hours, the C-4 explosives were triggered and the damage was done. But surely, if they were going through so much work to plan such a covert operation, the president himself wouldn't have said something like this publicly back in February of 2022. If Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer... North Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. And you would think that Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who was mentioned in Hirsch's report as one of the key players in the planning process, wouldn't have been so bold as to make a statement like this just a few days after the attack. This is also a tremendous opportunity. It's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy and thus to take away from uh, Vladimir Putin the weaponization of energy as a means of advancing uh, his uh, imperial designs. However, it would seem that the administration is just that bold. With Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs and noted architect of the 2014 coup in Ukraine, Victoria Newland, gloating about the destruction while testifying before Congress last month. I am, and I think the administration is very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. And if you thought the Victoria Newland's days of meddling in foreign affairs ended with her role in overseeing the Maidan coup, well then you're wrong. Or at least that's how it would seem, given this warning she issued back in January 2022. I want to be clear with you today. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. So what's in it for the U.S., and why are they so obsessed with Nord Stream? Well, publicly, U.S. officials have spent years saying that they don't like the pipelines running from Russia to Germany because they fear that the European Union will become too reliant on those supplies, giving Russia the power to, quote, use energy as a weapon against them. But there's a lot more to it than that. Because in the eyes of the power-hungry hawks in Washington, it's not just about their allies in Europe relying too much on Russia. It's also about those allies, like Germany, becoming too powerful themselves to the point where they're no longer forced to rely on the United States. Many of the Obama-era officials who are a part of the Biden administration today still have a chip on their shoulder about the fact that for all of the destruction that Barack Obama unleashed around the world, he didn't stop the Nord Stream 1 pipeline from becoming operational back in 2011. Ten years later, that pipeline supplied the EU with 40% of its natural gas in 2021. The potential for that amount to continue to increase skyrocketed when 
construction began on Nord Stream 2. It would appear as though the politicians in Europe, who didn't think twice before supporting the 2014 coup in Ukraine on the basis that the government in Kiev was getting too close to Russia, didn't realize that they themselves could one day be targeted by the U.S. for similar reasons. After all, Washington was one of their closest allies, right? That ignorance continued into 2015, with former German Chancellor Angela Merkel only recently admitting that the Minsk agreements were meant to, quote, give Ukraine time to prepare for war with Russia and had nothing to do with ensuring long-term peace between Kiev and the newly independent republics in the Donbass. Yet Merkel continued to fight for Nord Stream 2 up until she left office in 2021, just after the construction of the pipeline was completed because she knew it was what was best for her country's economy and it was what the people of Germany wanted. She tried to address all of the concerns, including those coming from Ukraine and Poland, about the revenue they would lose from gas transit fees if Russia sent its supplies through pipelines alone. But in the end, Merkel would lose the bet that the U.S. would target everyone except for its closest allies. She was then replaced by Olaf Scholz, Germany's spineless new chancellor. Chancellor. He gave in to pressure from Washington and agreed to suspend the certification of Nord Stream 2 on the same day that Russia announced it would recognize the independence of the republics in the Donbass because the Minsk agreements that were supposed to bring peace had been completely ignored by Ukraine. Months later, the same Nord Stream pipelines that were once an energy lifeline for Europe would be the target of an unprecedented attack. Media and politicians alike would rush to the conclusion that surely without any evidence, it had to be Russia's fault, and those claims would be used to justify excluding Russia from any of the official investigations into the attack on its own pipeline. But then, earlier this month, Germany's attorney general quietly admitted there was no evidence that Russia had any involvement in the Nord Stream attack, and the world was expected to just move on and not to ask any questions. Certainly not questions such as, if it wasn't Russia, then who was behind the attack? I guess it's no coincidence whatsoever that just two days after the Nord Stream pipeline was attacked, the new EU-funded Baltic Pipe gas pipeline went online with the purpose of transporting natural gas from Norway to Denmark and through the Baltic Sea on to Poland. It wouldn't make any sense at all for the US and Norway to work together to sabotage Nord Stream, cementing themselves as Europe's top suppliers of natural gas. But instead of asking those questions, the establishment media chose to question the character of Seymour Hersh instead also known as the legendary journalist who won the Pulitzer Prize for his work exposing the cover-up of the My Lai Massacre in Vietnam. They insisted that Hirsch was controversial because he exposed the torture of prisoners by the U.S. military in Iraq or called out both Obama and Trump for launching strikes against the Syrian government over alleged chemical attacks where the evidence was shaky at best. Oh, and the same media outlets that expect you to take every word they say as the gospel truth when they claim that it's backed up by anonymous sources suddenly have a problem with Seymour Hersh using actual anonymous sources to back up his finding. Because apparently it's only okay when they do it. And none of the so-called journalists and politicians who were so quick to jump on the bandwagon of Russia did it without any evidence want to have an honest conversation about a report presenting evidence that it was actually the U.S. with help from its NATO allies launching an attack targeting another NATO ally or the fact that the precedent set by such an attack will have implications for years if not decades to come because that's something everyone should be talking about. If anything in this video resonated with you, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, leave a comment, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to keep up with the latest breaking news, subscribe to my channel on Telegram and be sure to join my group there. And if you haven't yet, follow my channel on Minds.com, where you can find the latest updates on my work. Or if you want to tune into my weekly live streams, give me a follow on Rockfin, Rumble, and Odyssey. I look forward to seeing you there.